Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Uh, we inv uh, thank you for joining us on our First Baptist Church website on this Sunday uh, morning. And we just um, are grateful that you have decided to, to uh, visit our site today. Um, I want to uh, just kind of a little housekeeping on last uh, couple weeks ago, we had uh, communion uh, we serve communion, so I'm not going to serve communion today. We're going to hold off until the third Sunday of next month, so we won't be serving communion today. Uh, but I'm just going to uh, uh, just share a brief message with you uh, on our site for today and remind you that Sunday school is at 8.30 a.m., that we have um, Monday morning motivation, 7.25 a.m. on Monday morning, and then also we have our Wednesday evening Bible study via conference call, and then the children have a Zoom church at one o'clock uh, on on Sundays. So uh, just a reminder about that. Um, and again, I'm glad that you have decided to join us uh, today. Today, I want to uh, look at a passage of scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter six. So I invite you to get your Bible and uh, at your convenience, I'm just going to read one verse, but at your convenience, one want to invite you to read the entire chapter so that you can get the context of what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but for, uh, for now, I'm just going to read verse 16 out of Ephesians uh, chapter number six, uh, verse number 16. And uh, the Apostle Paul is writing and, um, and he says, in addition to all this, he says, take up the shield of faith which uh, with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. You know, whenever we talk about uh, the spiritual life or the Christian life, um, rarely do we talk about spiritual warfare. You know, most times, you know, you, we hear sermons, we, we hear about grace, we hear about the love of God, we hear about the mercy of God and the immutability of God, the fact that he does not change. We, uh, we learn different stories in the Bible, but it's not often that we talk about spiritual warfare. Uh, spiritual warfare has to do with um, not um, a, a physical fight, that you would fight with your fists and your hands or like a, a, a boxing match or a wrestling match. But spiritual warfare or a spiritual battle is a battle that takes place, uh, I want to say in the a, in a spirit realm, but I, I'm, I'm not going to use that language. I'll put it this way. A spiritual battle is something that takes place when you are trying to follow God and you are trying to follow the ways of God, but then something uh, gets in the way of you trying to follow uh, God. And I won't say something, I say someone get tries to get in the way. And that is spiritual warfare, where, where you're trying to follow God, trying to, to do the will of God, but someone is getting in the way to cause you to not do that. Well, that is spiritual uh, warfare. John 10 and 10 says that this enemy, the enemy, when I talk about enemy, I'm talking about that one who gets in the way of us doing the will of God. Uh, John 10, 10 says this enemy is a thief and he comes to kill, steal and destroy. And Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. And that points to the fact that there is a battle, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So there is this, this, this battle, this tug of war that is going on for your soul and for my soul. To be sure, everything that we go through now is not a spiritual attack. I want to say that now. Spiritual warfare... Is something that happens, but everything that we go through is not, you know, a spiritual attack. Some people are very uh, spiritual. They, they they attribute everything to be being kind of a spiritual battle, but everything is not that. In fact, there are a lot of problems that, you know, many of us have in life that are self-inflicted wounds. 
you know, these, uh, you know, there are things that, you know, you know, are results of poor choices that, that many of us have made in life. And because of our poor choices and bad decisions, many times that has led to us feeling like we're in this battle. But many times it's not so much that you're in a battle. It's just a matter of uh, having made uh, some poor choices. However, I want to say that there is a real enemy out there. And there is a real enemy who seeks to kill. He, ste he seeks to steal. He seeks to destroy. In Ephesians chapter 6, uh, the Apostle Paul talks about this issue of spiritual warfare or a spiritual uh, battle. And Paul lets us know that there are some weapons or you know, there, there is some ammunition uh, that you and I can use that is available to, to us to help us fight in this battle, this spiritual warfare. And so the Apostle Paul he talks about it. And, you know, I read verse 16, but earlier on in the chapter in verse number 10, Ephesians 10, Paul talks about, you know, the spiritual warfare, spiritual. And he says, finally, brethren, uh, Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and he's talking about how to, how we approach this this spiritual battles that you and I have. Uh, in a real sense, he's saying that when you and I face a spiritual battle, uh, when we're trying to get closer to, to God and we're trying to follow God and try trying to live for God and do the things of God, uh, do the will of God, uh, he's he's saying that uh, as we do that, uh, things will come up against us. He says. When things come up against you, when you're trying to follow God, uh, Paul says, don't try to rely on your own strength to fight this spiritual battle. He said, don't, don't do that. Don't try to use willpower to say, you know, I'm going to will myself past this spiritual battle. Don't think that you can win this spiritual battle because perhaps you have a uh, an associate's degree, or you have a bachelor's degree. Don't don't lean on your your degree in order to win your a spiritual battle and think that you're smarter than this enemy, uh, because the truth is you're not smarter than this enemy, and you're going to need to rely on God's power, His power and His might to get us through a spiritual battle. And so that's why Paul says, <laughs> he said, be strong in the Lord. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he, he's clear there. He's clear there about where our strength is coming from. Again, it's not coming from anything that you have within your own self, but it comes from the Lord. He says, be strong in the Lord. But the question is, how? How am I to be strong in the Lord? What exactly does that mean when Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, the Apostle Paul says this is how you do it. He says the way that you're going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of, of his might, he says the way you do it uh, is by putting on the whole armor of God. In other words, in order to win a spiritual battle and not lose a spiritual battle, you have to put on what the Lord gives you in order to be strong. Again, not your strength not your power, that not your wit. You Maybe you're a witty person or a, or a very intelligent person, but not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You have to use what God gives you. Now, I was thinking about this the other day that when my girls, my daughters were smaller, both of them used to love to wear their swimming suits. And, and uh, you know, it could it could literally be below zero degrees and they would want to both of them when they were wanted to wear their swimming suits all the time because they loved swimming and going to the pool so they so that they could go swimming. And sometimes it would be the winter, the middle of the winter, and I let them put on their swimsuit as they run around uh, the house. But other times uh, in order for me to protect them. In order for me to make sure that they could withstand the elements that were coming at them, if we were to go outside, I would make them put on more than what they had in their mind to put on. 
I'd make them put on a coat. I'd make them put on a hat, put on some you know, corduroy pants. I would make them put on a sweater. All these things to protect them from the elements. And so it is in the kingdom of God. When we wake up each morning, our heavenly father gives us proper gear. Uh, he gives us proper protection for the day. And so that's why Paul says it. Paul, that's why Paul said, look, before you head out, before you go and you have to deal with what you have to deal with, uh, be before you do that, be sure to put on the whole armor of God. And he's not talking about, you know, we think about, you know, I'm not talking about your Sunday dress or your, your best suit that you wear on Sunday morning. No, he's talking about armor. He's talking about armor. And so, uh, you know, he deals with that throughout this chapter. He talks about things like, uh, you, if you read through the chapter, he, Paul deals with a helmet of salvation. He talks about that. He, he talks about putting on a, a, a breastplate of righteousness. Y'all, that's armor. He's talking about putting on spiritual armor. And these are things that cover us up against the attacks of the enemy. And really, you know, really what Paul is teaching us is, is the fact that the devil doesn't fight fair. That's what he's trying. That's what Paul is trying to let us know. That's why he said, put on the whole armor of God. You know, in a boxing match, you're only allowed to, you can't kick in a boxing match. You can't knee somebody in a boxing match. It's, it's a boxing match. You have to stick to boxing. Same thing with, with wrestling. You know, if you're in a wrestling match, you're not allowed to bite somebody or, you you, you know, things like that. There, there are specific rules for the fight. And Paul is letting us know that the devil isn't like that. If it's a, if it's a boxing match, he's going to pull out a knife. He, he, he doesn't fight fair. He, 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 he doesn't do that. He's subtle. The enemy is dirty. He, he's, he's crafty. He, 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 he's unfair. And, and he'll hit you in places that you would not expect him to hit you in. And if he can't get you one way, you know, he'll, he'll certainly come after you another way. If he can't get to your family, he sure will get to your finances. If he doesn't get to your finances, he'll get to your health. If, if he doesn't get to your health, he'll get to your, to your job. He'll find a way to fight unfairly and, and craftily towards you to make life difficult and hard for you. And, you know, and, and, and that's why, you know, that's why Paul said it. That, that's why he said, it. he said, put on the whole armor. Because you don't know which way the enemy is coming at you. He's coming at you in an unfair fashion. He doesn't fight fair. He, and he's not, Paul, not talking about no Sunday dress or no Sunday suit. He's talking about armor that's going to protect you in a fight. And then he goes on in verse 12 to further explain who we are fighting against. And he kind of gives a better def definition in verse number 12, chapter six, verse number 12. Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can I tell y'all what that means? Can I tell you what it means? It means that this enemy is a spiritual enemy. That's, that's all that that verse is saying, that the enemy that we are fighting is not physical, but he's a spiritual enemy. He's not flesh and blood, but he'll use flesh and blood to come against you, to, to keep you away from God and the things of God. He'll use flesh and blood that he knows how to get inside of people and influence them to do his dirty work to break up things, to mess up things, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And, 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 and that's why, you know, again, that's why Paul says it. That's why he said, you got to put on the whole armor. Because you, you, he he's going to come at you from every angle. He, he's not just going to shoot at one place and just keep coming at that. So you know how, no, he's going to come at you from, from every angle. So you got to put on, uh, he said, the whole armor of God. And I'm, you know, I'm just going to deal with one of these pieces today. There's one of these pieces of armor, and I, I really am I'm almost done. Uh, but one piece that he, and he pulls it out in verse number 16. And I, I'm pulling out this verse because uh, in verse 16, uh, depending on the version that you have, King James, I believe, says, above all. <laughs> so he names a list, a list of uh, armor. But then he says, above all, he says, take 
the shield of faith. Above everything else, take the shield of faith. Why the shield of faith? He says, so we can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And, and if that doesn't tell you anything else, to quench the fiery darts of the enemy, if that doesn't tell you anything else, it lets us know that the enemy is aiming for you. He's aiming for you. He, he has something specific for you to try to bring you down. And there's something specific. And, and so he says, so Paul says, so this is why you got to take the shield. You got to take the shield of faith. If you think about it, all of the other artillery, and you read that chapter when you can, all of the other uh, artillery uh, that the apostle Paul talks about there is something he says, put it on. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put it on. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put put on, you know, he's, he talks about putting these things on. But when he says above all, you know, he gets to that part. He says, everything else you put on. But when it comes to the shield of faith, you take it up. Put on everything else, but take up. Take up the shield of faith. Why does he say that? Y'all, he says it because it is our faith that moves God. It is our faith that gets God's attention. Faith makes it hard for the fiery darts of Satan to penetrate us. Now, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please God. And, and, and I think it's important to point out there that the shield of faith, when he talks about this shield of faith, he's not talking about saving faith. That faith that we get when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and we become saved and we uh, no longer, we are now part of the kingdom of God and we're going uh, to heaven. He's not talking about saving faith. No, he's talking about living faith. When he says, hold up the shield of faith, and he, he said, we, you know, again, we can accept the Lord, but, but this faith, this shield of faith is there to sustain us until we get to heaven. It's faith for living, not, not just for salvation, but faith for living. And really, uh, you know, uh, you, the enemy would be just fine with just making us useless. That's what he wants to do. He wants to make us useless for the kingdom of God. He wants to make us hopeless. Uh, for when it comes to the kingdom of God, that everything that we preach and everything that we learn in scripture, that that it is fruitless in our life. That's that's what he wants. He, he, he doesn't want it to have any effectiveness in our lives. He, he wants us to 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 believe, but be idle in our faith, that, that we get tossed and turned by every wind of doctrine, that, that every problem that comes up, we get so yanked out of socket that we, don't, we, just, we just give up on our faith. That's what the enemy is aiming for, for us to be fruitless. And that's what he, he, he wants. He wants us to get, you know, to get caught up in things that don't even matter. That's what he wants us to do. So, so, so we, so we get hit by something and, and we get so taken by it that we turn from the things of God and we get caught up in things that don't even matter. And if he can get us caught up in things that don't matter, then guess what? We can't do the things that do matter. And that is the kingdom work. And so Paul says, you need the shield of faith. He said, that's what you need. You need the shield of faith. Why? So you can extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. I'm just about done. Flaming darts, fiery darts literally means missiles. That's what he's talking about. Missiles that are being aimed and shot at us. What kind of missiles? Sometimes he fires lust missiles. Lust missiles, you know, uh, lust missiles that, you know, the, the lust of greed, the, you know, having us lust for power, you know, having us lust for our will to be done above God's will to be done. And the list goes on and on about the things that he would have us to lust for, because a lot of people have been hit and fallen for this missile of lust, a different, different lust. Now, I just named one. I just named one of the missiles, and that was that was lust. But the truth is, the enemy has a plethora. He has countless missiles that he can attack us with. And Paul says the way that you deal with these missiles is by taking up your faith. 
by taking up your faith. Romans 1 and 7 says the just shall live by faith. How are they going to live? By faith. Faith. That means that we're supposed to exercise our faith on a daily basis. When everybody else is talking about, oh, we're not going to make it. Oh, it's not going to be enough. Oh, we, you know, we don't have what it takes. No, we have to use faith language and we have to put up the shield of faith every day. Yes, I am going to make it. Yes, things will get better. Yes, God has heard our prayers. And so we have to take it up daily. Hebrews says by faith. The worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith, Abel gave a more excellent offering. By faith, Abram left uh, the heir of the Chaldeans. We've been talking about that on Wednesday night. By faith, Sarah uh, had a son in her old age. By faith, Noah built an ark without any signs of rain uh, before the ark came. By faith, Mo uh, Moses led the children of Israel uh, out of bondage. By faith, Joshua led the children around the walls seven times. And, and on the seventh time, the walls came tumbling down. Brothers and sisters, Paul says, whatever it is that you're going through in your life, whatever it is that you're facing, Paul says, don't face it by yourself. Don't try to face it in your own strength. Paul says, take up the shield of faith. You got to have faith to get through that thing. Some things you will not get through unless you have faith in God. Why? Because it's impossible to please God without faith. So whatever you're going through, doesn't matter what it is, be sure, be sure to hold up your faith. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you, Lord, that we have been reminded today that we are part of the kingdom of God and that Every day is not going to be a day of sunshine. Every day is not going to be a day that goes the way that we would have it to go. But we're going to have some difficult days. We're going to have some troubling days. But Lord, you promised to never leave us nor to forsake us. And Lord, then you even give us some weapons that we can handle. And, and, and as we go through the issues of this life, Lord, you said, take up the shield of faith. And Lord, we, I pray for each one of us that we would have the faith to endure whatever it is that we're going through, that we would be reminded, Father God, that there is no, uh, there is nothing on this earth, Lord, that's more powerful than you. And as long as we belong to you, Heavenly Father, we will get through it. And we just thank you in advance. I thank you in advance for what my brother or my sister is going through. I pray that you would meet each one of us at our point of need. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all thanks, give you all praise. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, there's some information below. If you uh, have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to join uh, or to contact me and I will walk you through the scriptures to help you to get saved and so that you can get on this journey with us on our way up the King's Highway. So grateful that you have joined us today. God bless you and you'll have a wonderful, blessed day. God bless. The word says, for the spirit of heaviness, put on the garment of praise. And that's how we fight our battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my battles. What we're doing tonight. This is how I find my battles. Just when you think you're lost. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
we find our bed This is how we fight our bad. This is how we fight our bad. This is how we fight our bad.